All right, we live. All right, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Minority Women in Business Summit, a virtual panel discussion. Of course, since everything is pretty crazy with this COVID, um, Code Pink Productions and Monique J, CEO, came up with the brilliant idea uh, to make sure that we have an opportunity to sew into one another, to get some questions out there on the table regarding what we are dealing with um, as far as women in business. Um, during this COVID situation and otherwise. So we have some really great panelists uh, that are joining us today. We're gonna ask some really great questions. And also I want to encourage you all to make sure you have your pad and pen ready. That's some very valuable information is gonna be shared. And also um, if you will look, I'm not sure exactly how it looks on your screens, but there is an option for you guys to chat. So I want to encourage you to also send in some questions over there. And as we um, have time, I'll definitely be grabbing some of those questions uh, that you all would like to pose to the panel as well. So with that being said, we're gonna go ahead and get started. My name is Keisha Hunter. I am the moderator for the event today. And my business is busybuilder.com. Um, I sometimes build websites, but I also do uh, consulting and social media marketing and multimedia marketing. Um, so what I'm going to do is actually go around um, the stage, if you will, and I'm gonna have each panelist introduce themselves. Um, so that'll be uh, you know about 90 seconds long. So um, first, if you would, uh, Ms. Hiram Rashid Jones, go ahead and introduce yourself and tell everyone a little bit about who you are and what you do. Sure. Hi, I'm Erin Rashid Jones, and um, I'm here from Dallas, Texas, and I'm one of the owners of Electrician on Call. We're the fastest growing, privately owned uh, electrical and AC company um, in the state of Texas. Um, and then I also am the leader for the Dallas Professional Women's Organization, which is a um, awesome platform that connects um, women executives, young professionals, and um, all people together so we can learn and grow from one another. Also serve on several different boards. So I'm actually at This Side Up Family right now, which is a nonprofit um, that focuses on family and relationships. So uh, multiple hats here to serve. Awesome, awesome. Thank you so much. Um, if you would go ahead and introduce yourself, Ms. Anitra Smith. Good morning. So I just wanted to pose a scenario. Um, imagine hearing, I'm just not good with money. How many times have we said that to ourselves? How many times have you heard that? And we know that that statement in itself, it can be heavy and it can be disheartening. And that is the reason that I created my business, Wise Money Mindset, Financial Wellness for Women, because we need to hear, yes, we are good with money. And so as founder and um, master coach at Wise Money Mindset, I collaborate with women to help them create um, four different or to help um, build them up in four different areas, which include their financial mindset, their motives behind their spending, their mouth, what we're saying about our money, and then eventually bringing all of that together to make sure that our money is working really hard and really smart for us. So I am um, very pleased to be here and thank you for having me. Absolutely. Thank you so much. All right, Miss Amanda Mankata Perkins, if you would introduce yourself and what you do. Hi, good morning, everybody. And um, and happy Juneteenth. I know it was yesterday, but the celebrations continue. So I hope that you guys get a chance to get out and, and, uh, and uh, commemorate in some way. I'm Amanda Mankata Perkins, and I'm from Chicago. I see a few people from Illinois here in the room. So shout out to you guys. Um, I am a corporate attorney and a business management consultant. I decided to leave big corporate law in order to set up my own shop and help small businesses, mid-sized businesses that are that are led by women, people of color, and that are looking for you know support and running their companies. So that is exactly what I'm doing right now. I am um, also working on launching my legal firm because I realize there's so much need, and what better way to use my experience and the um, and the resources that I have than to help people that are starting up and that are also in this space and you know of color, which is awesome too. 
Mm -hmm. um, another thing, cool thing about me is I love teaching, I love educating, so I will this fall be um, joining the legal faculty at my alma mater at DePaul Law, so I'm excited about that. I'm a nerd, I'm a nerd people. <laughs> Awesome, awesome, thank you so much. So of course, uh, last but absolutely not least, uh, the person who is responsible for uh, organizing this event and putting everything together, please go ahead and let everyone know who you are and what you do. Of course, now, uh, Monique, we all know, if you know anything about her, she does a whole lot of stuff. So this is gonna be interesting to see what she actually says in this short time period. But Miss Monique Muhammad, go ahead and introduce yourself and tell the people a little bit about you. Hi, welcome everyone. First, I wanna say we do have Miss Kenyatta Butcher, who is our other panelist, who is trying to get in um, with us. She's having technical difficulties. Of course, that's just a part of what's going on today. But I am Monique. I'm Muhammad, also known as Monique J. Um, and what I'd like to say to sum it all up, I am an expert in overcoming adversity in your thoughts mm -hmm. and your finances to achieve personal and um, business happiness. So that's it. And then I, I have several different businesses, but they all fit right into that <laughs> description. I love it. I love it. So what we're going to do, guys, we're going to go ahead and hop into some questions uh, that we have compiled uh, just from um, experience and from speaking with different women in business and some of the different topics that we know um, uh, kind of need to be, be covered today based on what's happening in our environment and in society in general. So the first question, um, and we're just going to have a panelist, you know, uh, throw up uh, their hand uh, if they want to go ahead and tackle the question and then we'll kind of go from there. Um, so first question is, what was the biggest challenge that you have faced being a minority or woman uh, in your field deciding to start your own business? So whether that was, you know, funding, credit, et cetera. So what would you say was your biggest challenge? Who would like to answer that question? Okay. Well, this is such a great question. Um, I my my answer is actually two part. Um, the first being, I have I had to realize through a coach that I have a savior mentality, meaning I want to save everybody. I want to help everybody. And as a uh, as a startup business, as a woman, as a nurturer, and as a supporter of everything living and being on the earth. Um, I wanted to help everybody. And so when I started my coaching practice, my my um, my audience was too broad and I got frustrated. I remember talking with Monique about this. Um, she was one of the people. Also, my father that told me that you need to find a target audience. And then second, um, the second thing I would say is know the value of your business. In order to drive business, it does not mean that you have to discount or give away all of your services or all of your products. You have to know your value because bringing your prices back up is a really, really difficult thing to do. And also, when you lower your value and lower what you add to people's lives, you discredit what you are giving them. You discredit yourself and you discredit your ability. So those would be the two things that I would offer to any woman um, thinking about starting a business. Awesome. 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 Okay, ladies. So the next question uh, that we have is, uh, what is the biggest Wait, one mistake? second. I, I, I can interrupt. Erin yes. had her hand up real quick, too, so I'm going to give her a second to go down. Okay? Go ahead. Okay, okay. Amanda, you're going to go first? Oh, okay. All right. So um, <laughs> I wanted to piggyback off of Anitra. That was a wonderful point. Um, the other thing was, I was taking everyone's word for what they said they were going to do for me. And um, Amanda, you might appreciate this, but I learned to get everything in writing because when you have these grand ideas and you're like, I wanna help everyone, then people start coming forward with their res resources. And they're like, okay, when you do that, I'll come and help with, you, with this or with that. But when I finally pulled the trigger and I went back and I asked for, what I needed in the first place, which is really what I was going to pay for in the first place, right? Wasn't asking for anything for free. Um, people started backpedaling on what they can offer and how often they would be able to offer that up. So when you're having that those discussions, 
when you're in the honeymoon stage of meeting people that you really, really like, get it on paper and just say, this is how I kind of do business so I don't forget kind of thing, but have it on paper and follow up with an email that says, for what we talked about, it was wonderful meeting you, but and I'm a, I appreciate it, but I'm going to call you later on so you have a record of it. Okay, so that's what I learned moving forward. Okay, and Amanda and then Monique, we'll just go ahead and expand on this question. Okay, um, absolutely. I will actually come back later to what those things should be in that email that you send, but perfect. Um, one other thing that I would say too is, so I was a, I self-funded because I, I have personal services that I'm a professional services. So it's kind of harder to get the credit that you need to start businesses like that. So if you are doing professional services and if you can self-fund, fantastic. Um, one thing that I will say too, that was very hard for me when I first started is this imposter syndrome. And I know it travels with us everywhere. It travels with us into corporate America when we are starting our own business. And what's amazing to me is I saw my male, white male counterparts go and start businesses with half of the, um, the intellectual wherewithal that I had and all of the confidence in the world. And I had all of the intellectual wherewithal I needed and half of the confidence. And so I kind of talked myself out of starting earlier. Mm -hmm. so what I would say to you is if, you know, like it was said earlier, know what you are giving, know your gift, know your talent and believe in yourself and go and do it. Do not talk yourself out of providing services that you know people can benefit from. Because the moment I stepped into this arena, people started gravitating and I underestimated my worth. So um, I would say to you, just know your worth, work on that and, and appreciate that. And if you have the intellectual wherewithal, if you have your gift, that's all that you need. You'll be good. I love that. Monique. Yes, um, I, I made several. I kind of want to piggyback on Anitra really quick. One of the biggest mistakes that I made is um, thinking that everyone who asks for your help really, really wants it so much so that they're willing to make adjustments and willing to follow the advice um, that you give them. That's one. Um, the other one would be uh, devaluing what my worth was um, because I have such a desire to help and to see especially people in minority communities um, realize what what wealth and success and, and happiness is I would uh, devalue what I charge for a lot of the things if not a lot of times just give away everything for free and I have now learned that people pay for what they want we watch them do it every day no matter what their um, their finances are. Now, do I, because I still know that regardless, there are people who are in dire straits, I still make adjustments, but not so much so that I am putting myself in the poor house and then I look up and they're driving a new car, you know, but they didn't want to pay for that. So those are two, I made several, but those are the two top ones, I think. Now, I, I actually want to expand a little bit up on this topic. There was something that Anitra said that I think Monique had alluded to uh, when she was first starting her business in regards to um, focusing. So, for instance, there's like this school of thought that says, OK, you need to find your one thing. You need to focus on that and go hard. Also, though, we know as women who are starting new businesses, it's also important to have your hands to have multiple streams of income. So with that being said, where, what, where do you find that balance between needing to have multiple streams of income just because that's going to help you build your main baby, but also focusing enough on your baby so that you're not spreading yourself too thin? Who, who would like to speak to that first? I guess I can go. Okay. So I use a method called um, the SMART, you know, just uh, SMART goals. And um, you, you guys can Google this. There's plenty of uh, spreadsheets and stuff out there, but it puts your thoughts into focus. And so you have to measure against something, right? So if you're having to raise capital, let's say $20,000, you want to make sure that you have something that can show you that something is short term in order to get to the long term goal. Um, take an inventory um, of yourself first. Then go ask people that are close to you, also like your fans, your top fans, and your best friend, honestly, may not be your top fan. You want to go to someone that sees um, different talents and skills that you have and ask them, 
to take an inventory of you? Are there things that they see in you that maybe you take for granted, right? And then hone those in and then go Google, what are some ways that you can make money with the skill sets that you already have without having to go and buy new equipment, without having to go and spend a dime. So start cheap, start little, as far as the output you're gonna do. For example, um, what I ended up doing first was I used to um, edit and do copyright stuff, right? So when someone was like, Keisha, you were saying you did websites, right? You would hand that um, mumbo jumbo, term, you know, uh, you know what people could have, and then I would clean it up and I would hand it back over to you and say, now this looks solid because I had an attention to detail. I made a hundred dollars per copy. That was back then. I didn't know my worth. Hundred dollars per copy. Then from that was enough that I was able to go and then eventually get a domain, do what I needed to do. Um, so I piggybacked off of it, but I never lost sight of the initial goal, which was I have to raise X amount to do this and make some additional sacrifices. And now with my company, we have our own internal marketing because we sharpen those skill sets so much that we don't have to use other services except when we don't have those, you know, um, commercial tools. So that was what we did. Start off with smart tools, take an inventory of yourself. Ask people that are your biggest fans. They may not be your family. They may not be people that you know for a very long time. OK, other business owners, other women business owners will be the first one to say, I see this in you. Go do it. So learn to get your information from the right folks. Awesome. Money. I thought it would it, I would be crazy because anybody who's attending who knows me would would wonder why I wouldn't answer the the uh, doing too much or multiple streams of income question. Um, so I had to say that I definitely believe that you should have multiple streams of income. Um, what I believe is that you should do and have as many of those that will allow you to stay mentally balanced and mentally at peace. So everyone's level is different. For me, I work better under pressure. Um, I have what I have coined uh, adult ADHD. So <laughs> I like to be doing a bunch of different things at, 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 the, at the same time. Um, sometimes it does become overwhelming because for me, there is nothing that I can conceive that I cannot achieve. So that being the case, if I think it, if I wake up with it, however, I am going to make it happen. What you have to learn to do is check yourself though. So how I have learned to check myself is if there are, if I have five different businesses, then what I do is I will do what I can within them, hire out when, when I can't do something, but I do know I have a lot of the tools myself, but if I cannot be a pro at it, I'm gonna definitely hire out so that it relaxes me. And then when I become overwhelmed in a day of trying to manage all five at a time, you step away from the computer, you step away from the phone, you step away and you either do something that relaxes you. And that what relaxes me is either taking a walk around the block or going and just laying down. It may only be 15 power minutes, but that 15 power minutes gives me the opportunity to keep running those five different businesses at a time. Mm -hmm. That's it. Awesome. Amanda. Um, so I, I definitely agree with that. I think you should consider having multiple streams of income, even if you have a full time job. There should be another way that you're bringing in a source of income because nothing is ever guaranteed. And so you need something to fall back on um, just at least to keep you afloat. Um, but I think we should make a distinction between what types of income, like what types of streams, right? So there are active streams of income where you're starting these businesses, you're running these businesses, you're, you're kind of like the, uh, the, the front end and the back end, and then you have passive streams of income as well. So what I would say is for those that are maybe, maybe you're working full time and you're thinking about starting the company, your side time hustle, that hustle on the side can be that extra stream of income. And while you're building that, you're not, you are not um sacrificing a lot of your your um, money right so you can have your business on the side making money for you another thing is though if you think about like even if you have five five things that are bringing money in if you're actively involved with all five things maybe like monique said maybe you can do it but maybe you can't do it so consider having a passive stream of income 
some investment property, having rental income come in, right? Or purchasing, making investments in other people's businesses so that money can work for you as well. So when we say having multiple streams of income, it doesn't have to be you doing all of the work. And so we should consider what our um, other sources are. How much time do you really have? Because let me tell you another thing. When you're spreading yourself too thin, your quality is going to suffer. Your quality is yeah. going to suffer somewhere. So you definitely want to make sure that you don't suffer with your work quality, family quality, health quality, mental quality. Um, keep those things in mind. So to the extent that you can have some passive streams of income, I say go get them. Awesome. You, you wanted to say something, Anitra? Yes, just to kind of piggyback, I love that we, we're all kind of circling, circling around, um, just building upon what the lady said um, in that it is possible for you to streamline and build upon the primary business that you have and having passive income um, as, a means of as a means of building um, additional income in the background or having, you know, creating that business uh, that stems from your primary business where you're making money in your sleep. You utilize online tools and, and things to make money while you're working on your primary thing. Um, but I think the biggest thing that we're all saying is to not become overwhelmed. Don't become complacent. Don't become passive, but figure out things that are not overwhelming, that are not taking away from the quality of your work, that are not stressing you out or taking away from your family and um, just building upon the thing that you have the strength in because it makes such a difference when you build upon something that you're already strong in. It doesn't take as much from you. And so I will completely agree with uh, what everyone is saying. Absolutely. I love that. And the actually the next question I'm going to jump into kind of alludes a little bit to some things that Amanda was talking about um, just now, which basically is centered around uh, collaboration. And in specific, you know, specifically, since we are women owned uh, businesses here. Specifically, how can we do better to make sure that we are uh, collaborating with other women in business? I personally think it's a myth that women don't work together and support one another. And it may have really been that way, you know, a couple of decades ago. I, I personally have seen so much more of women working together, supporting one another, uplifting one another in business. But there, I'm sure there are still people out there who are afraid to help other women who are in a similar field or adjacent field um, because they look at these people as competition as opposed to being able to work with one another. So what are some ways that either you guys personally are overcoming that um, or, you know, just different ways um, or tips that you can share with our audience on how to successfully collaborate with other businesses, women owned businesses, particularly who would like to go first. Yeah, so a, a couple things. I um one, we need to just start seeing the value um in each other and what we can bring to the table. Women are collectively, I this is not to be misogynistic or not to be anti-men at all, but this is women are highly educated. We are becoming vastly more educated than our male counterparts. When I was in my in my law firm, not my law firm, but when I was in law school, there were more of us, there were more women in that um, in my class than there were of men. And I don't think I don't think it's a bad thing to look at each other as, okay, if she's out here, you know, doing her thing in law, if I'm com I'm not comparing myself, but having that competition is not a bad thing because what I realize is iron sharpens iron. And if she's out there doing a really good job, I can be out there doing a really good job too. And then frankly, we all have our niches or we all have our thing that we're doing. And so we can build with each other. And so I think it was called like a coalition instead of competition. I mean, we can we can change the, the, the semantics around it. I really just think we need to start looking at the value that each other brings. I have been, another thing that I think we need to do is be very, very intentional about who we're partnering with, who we're hiring, who we're giving business out to, because we can say, kumbaya, women should work together, but who are you really hiring when you when you hire an attorney? Is it me? Who are you really hiring when you're doing copywriting? You know, is it gonna be someone from Urim's team? Who are you really hiring? You know what I mean? Like, it's just a matter of who are you hiring? Who are you paying your money to? Another thing is um, women, 
and especially black women, the power of the dollar, right? We are spending, we give our money out, but it's a matter of us aligning with each other and saying, I'm going to trust you with my money, trust you that you're going to help me guide my business and, um, and invest in you. So I think we just have to be much more purposeful because the value is there. There are so many, like, I'm just looking at this panel of women that I, I'm meeting for the first time and didn't even realize that you guys are just bosses in your own right and doing so many great things. Um, but I have to be mindful. So my accountant is black. My realtor who is helping me close on a property is also a black woman. And I'm being mindful about hiring folks that can benefit me that are women. So I would encourage us to make sure that we're being purposeful about that too. That's awesome. Uh, who else would like to speak to that? Anitra. Oh, Anitra, go ahead. Well, I was I was just thinking um, in terms of it's something we've heard all the time. Teamwork makes the dream work. And I know that I am a starch proponent for building like money teams, building teams around the thing that you're trying to accomplish, because we have to face facts. There are lots of areas that we want to be um, strengthened, in, strengthened in and we want to grow in. But sometimes we just don't know how. And I know that being amongst progressive women who have like mindsets in regards to business and money and things like that. It actually gives me permission. It gives me confidence to actually move forward in the thing that I may have been afraid to do on my own. And then also it gives me accountability. Somebody needs, you know, somebody says, hey, girl, you might need to just keep that as a hobby, you know, and be OK with that because you structured a team that um, thinks like you and wants to see you thrive and do well. And so that means that the information and the feedback that you are given, you know that it's constructive. So in choosing your teams, you not only get strengthened, but you also give strength as well. I love that. Monique? Yeah. Erin, you can go ahead. Oh, okay, thank you. So um, I love everything. I mean, I'm taking notes myself. If you see me looking down, I'm taking notes, right? I, I'm not exempt from it. But um, I absolutely believe um, the, you know, collaborate versus competition. You know, no one is your competition. Um, so what one of the things that I like to do, the action items are, number one, if you have a website, build a page on your website that says, here are all these different women businesses that I trust. Have that in there. That can be your takeaway starting today. Here are the women businesses that I trust. Then the other thing is um, sometimes when people, when friends support your business, they ask for discounts. Now I, I might get booted off the panel, but this is what I say. Don't give discounts. Okay. Here's the thing. You work so hard in what you do. Your friends know where you put your money, right? They see what you're doing in the community. They see what your dreams are. Uh, when you're discounting your services over and over again, that's taking it away. So as another woman business owner, I'm never going to go to anyone and say, give me a discount. I don't want the discount. I want a quality of what you're giving me. That's why I trusted that you were going to do it. And if you feel like giving me a discount, I'll let you give me a discount to make my day if that's what you want to do. But if that's not, I'm not going to ask for it because I respect you enough. So I think women as part of empowering one another, collaborating and supporting, when you get ready to reach out for that business and say, I really need this, don't expect a discount. Don't do that because we there we are there's so much uphill battles that we do so much, many obstacles in our way, especially as women of color that we would love to support you, but please be respectful of our pricing. So that's another thing I've been in business for 20 years. And, and that's one thing that I do. I say, give me full price. No, Aram, I'm going to give you this. No, I don't want the discount. Take that discount money and go put it in a nonprofit. Do something like that. Mm -hmm. I don't want the discount. Then the last thing is your A team build an A team. And this is what the A team means. And make sure that your A team are women of color. Okay. I'm going to explain this to you. Your A team should be a attorney. Okay. That's one A. Your other one should be an advisor, right? Like a coach, a business coach. And another, um, the, and the last A on that should be your accountant. Okay. If you don't have an advisor an attorney and an accountant, you're not really in business just yet. You're in startup mode. And once you get past startup mode, you still need them on speed dial. 
okay? And so if you're really talking about supporting women, women of color, women business owners, then you're talking about your A-team are women. You're not giving out discounts. You're not asking for discounts. You respect the exchange of money there. And then put it on your website. And then when you save their number on your telephone, right next to their name, put down something like my favorite accountant. So when you send that over to someone else and Monique knows it next to her name, it says my favorite a team. And I mean, it has all of that. So when I send people to Monique, they're like, good God. Okay. I'm going to call her. So do those things that are intentional and get immediate results. So um, I'll leave it. I'll leave it there. I love that Monique. All right. So if you guys know me, I always say I have this tag. I'm not your average anything. I have a whole bunch of degrees that would say that I'm supposed to speak a certain way and be a certain way. But I I got two sides of me. So I like to appeal to who I say my audience is, which are are those that are here, but also those that may be a little here and I need my help to put them here. So what I'm going to say in that is I'm just going to be honest. A lot of times as women we do not work to support one another because we think that if i support her somehow some way that's going to take away and prevent me from my success and i'll say and i use this example all the time with this closed fist with the closed fist nothing else can get in it nothing mm -hmm. else will come in it so as you are holding on to your support holding on to your help that you could give to others you're also not allowing anything to come back to you Anything that God has for you is for you. Helping someone else, uh, sharing about someone else is not going to hurt you. Now, what I will say, you don't share everybody and you don't refer everybody. But once someone has shown you that they deserve your referral they, or they deserve your share, be it they've done business with you or be it they haven't done anything to you at all, which means there's no reason why until they do, you shouldn't support them. And I can only say that because I have grace of God. I have hundreds of clients and I'll be honest, maybe 30 of them, if out of hundreds, or I say, just say maybe 10% of them actually share who I am with others. And I never understand it. I think a lot of times it doesn't even have anything to do with me. It may have to do with, they don't want to help whoever those other people are in their life and for me that is the craziest thing ever because it, it, it's a sign of how much you love yourself if you love yourself you don't have a problem with allowing and seeing anybody else win that's basically it on that i love that i love that and actually here's a something that wasn't on my list mo uh, monique that i'm going to hop into that um iram kind of brought up as far as having those three a's um, in your life. And she said, advisor, I'm going to say, um, mentor, how important, uh, do you guys think it is? Um, and I'm, I can just say that I think it is of utmost importance to have a mentor in your life, someone who is in your field, uh, that you seek out, um, to ask advice on, you know, how to get where they got, how to get the fruit on the tree that they had. How important would you say it is to success, to be successful, um, to, to have a mentor in your life to, to help you get there? Um, go ahead, Amanda. Okay, so I, um, I appreciate this question so much. And I think that I just want to make a distinction between two things. There's an advocate and there's a mentor. And frankly, I think that we need more advocates in our lives than we do need mentors. Mentors are people that are going to tell you what they think you need to be doing. They'll kind of say yay or nay, kind of give you like the lay of the land and how you should be navigating it. And um, But an advocate, an advocate is somebody that has literally got your back. This is a person that is going to put themselves, put their reputation on the line to help you get to where you need to be. And I realized early on in my career that I had a whole lot of mentors telling me you should do this, you should do that. It's kind of like um, being, you know, everybody has an opinion on what you should do. However, I have now switched my focus to have more advocates on my behalf. Because of those advocates, I am getting business opportunities I have never thought about before. I am getting meetings with people. I just met with um, several elected officials in Chicago because of my advocates. I am now, I just realized I need to start my law firm because of the advocates that are in my corner. They are the people that are gonna say, you're gonna succeed because we're gonna see to it. 
those are the folks that you need in your corner. So on your A team, I like that. An attorney, an accountant, an advocate. Love that. Who, who else wanted to speak to this topic? Just really quick. Um, this is so good. Monique, you're going to have to do this. I said every quarter, I'm going to go for every month. Okay. So because you have like realizations here and, you know, with the mentor and advisor, I, I totally get those points. You're going to be in different walks in your career, in your mindset, in the season, right? Sometimes you need a mentor and sometimes you need multiple mentors, right? So the sky's the limit. Go out there and find people that you um, respect and that you're like, wow, I really wish I had that skill set. Now, what I'm not telling you to do is get a mentor that you're going to copy. Don't copy what anyone else is doing. Be unique. Be yourself. Take in and understand some of those qualities that you need to sharpen up. Um, and you can have multiple men mentors. I, I have like 20 of them and I call them my mamas. That's what I do. And I specifically go and um, introduce myself to women um, that I've been following along. Um, one may be in a completely different field than, than I'm in. Um, one may be someone that just grounds me and helps me understand how to deal with frustrations, you know, stuff like that. So you don't look for a mentor that's going to be 100% of everything you want to be. Look for a mentor that has a quality and multiple mentors. But on the advocate, the advisor, or, you know, that you're talking about, absolutely you need to find a circle of advocates. And most of the time, that's going to be other women business owners, maybe not in the same industry as you, okay, because they might perceive that as a competition. But when you're around other women business owners, and that's what they say about us in the streets, is they go, well, why, why do these women business owners hang around with one another? Well, because we understand how hard it was to get to where we're at, and we're going to do nothing but support each other so seek out other um, small business owners, seek out other women professionals and just just introduce yourself. Make that first step and introduce yourself with this um, standpoint of how can I help you? Right. Um, be open to that, because then it's a two way relationship. Right. Mm -hmm. You can help them as well in some capacity. Um, but but start making those engagements, have your mentors and your advocates there. And I agree, those advocates will open up doors because they they're your number one fan whether you're in the room or not that mentor has a different a standpoint that mentor has been there done that okay mm -hmm. so they are there to just kind of guide you along the way when you have those questions an advocate i mean they're just going to open up doors so i get you i so i have four on my a team now because they went in i was like all right i got you girl i, got I you. love that i love that anitra um, I would I would definitely say us supporting one another is so important. I've recognized the need, um, the absolute need to glean from any woman that can teach me, any woman that has done what I want to do, accomplish any goal that I want to accomplish that has already done that and can show me how to leap over uh, tall buildings and, and jump hurdles and all of these things and not bump my head so many times. Why wouldn't you want somebody on your team like that to save you time, to save you money? And I truly believe that um, when you are growing as a businesswoman, when you are able to go sit at a table where you feel like you're not quite ready to be in that room or you don't have anything to offer, that is a show of growth. It is a show of um, that your character and your confidence is building when you can surround yourself with millionaires and wealthy people and you're still in a place where you're trying to get to that level. It builds character. It inspires hope and it um, just builds your confidence as a businesswoman when you can say, hey, I had something to lend to that conversation. It may have not been very much, but I had something to say. Or as Aaron, um, as Aaron was stating, um, that maybe I didn't get anything from this, but I was able to build up another woman and um, maybe she'll be able to build me up later on. Maybe not. But I was able to give value or add value to um, her, her business and her journey and becoming a strong businesswoman. Awesome. Monique, did you want to speak to this topic? Okay. So the next 
next question then that we're going to hop into is centered around marketing. So now, of course, keeping in mind that there are multiple ways to market a business and that you should tap into multiple ways of marketing, marketing a business. I want you ladies to choose the top one that you are using as of late, because we know that changes likely, you know, quarterly, especially with today's day and age. Uh, but go ahead, at, at least for now, and choose the top uh, marketing tool, if you will, that you currently use um, to, to market your business. And also speak on whether or not you think it's necessary uh, in this day and age to have a, a web site. So outside of social media, but a website. So who would like to uh, speak to that first? Okay, Ms. Anitra, go ahead. Okay, well, I would say right now, um, I primarily use peer-to-peer -peer referrals, okay? That works pretty well, but I'm starting to venture more into social media. Social media for me is like a, a necessary evil. And so I am getting into it and exploring it more, but instead of doing it on my own, I'm doing it with someone that does it really well, partnering with another um, black business owner who that is her strength, that is her business. And she's showing me the ropes. Um, in regards to a website, I really see or foresee websites not being um, a viable tool for connecting because social media, that game is really strong and really tight right now. And you can save a lot of money um, using those platforms, multiple platforms that you can connect rather than rather than just driving traffic um, just to a website. So that's the things that I'm using right now and would suggest. Uh, Monique. All right. So I, of course, I use everything um, right now. I definitely use peer-to-peer. Uh, -peer. I use all social, well, most social media platforms. Um, and I will say as a business coach, that no matter what business you are in, if you are looking to take your business to the next level, it is imperative that you have a website. Um, and the reason why it's imperative, um, one thing behind, because you need a professional email. When you are looking to go beyond the block, as I call it, um, and you're going into different spaces, your professionalism shows in your email. If you say mm -hmm. such, 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 such at gmail.com, for certain people in business, that means, okay, she obviously or he obviously didn't sit down with a coach or um, and, and learn exactly some of the key things that are important to have and invest in when you're starting a business. Now, you don't necessarily mm -hmm. have to have a website to get a professional um, email. You can a lot mm -hmm. of times I know with um, Google G Suite, you can purchase just a professional email with a dot com to your website on the back of it and it will forward to your um, Gmail email account. But you definitely, I don't care if you, um, if it's a small, simple uh, e website, but you definitely need to get one. Keisha on here actually builds, and if you visit in mine, she's the one who built actually all of my um, websites. You can always find somebody who is willing to either work with you, not lower their price, but work with you. Um, and a lot of times in, in trying to um, reduce that, that cost, it also shows when people come and visit the website. So I think all businesses, mm -hmm. no matter what you do, you should have a, a website. Some will be more complex than others, but you definitely want one because that's how a lot of people are finding things in Google and all of those things like that. I mean I was on mute. Okay, sorry. Um, I 1000% agree. I, I think you need a website. Um, not because you're literally going to get business from that website, but it has become your electronic resume. It has become your, um, your credibility, if you will. So if somebody says, um, oh, I know this really good accountant. Her name is Monique, and um, she does awesome work. First thing that may come out is, does she, has, does she have a website? Let me find out her footprint. Um, so I would just say, you know, there are ways that you can you can put together a very um, uh, inexpensive website. You don't have to have the, the biggest, most complicated website ever. You can literally just have a landing page with some information on it, make it very, very simple. But I would say, yes, you definitely need to have a website. It's just, it gives you, it bolsters your credibility. 
The other thing I would say too is do not underestimate the power of LinkedIn. Right now, LinkedIn is the most dynamic platform for business owners, small, big, medium, corporate. Everybody's on LinkedIn right now. I have no idea when it's gonna die down and become the new Facebook, but I would say if you don't have a LinkedIn profile, please create a LinkedIn profile. Please also create a company page for your company if you have one. People are driving traffic to LinkedIn. It is amazing right now, especially for small business owners. I have literally gotten, um, I've gotten clients from this. I've gotten business requests from LinkedIn. Go in there, post every now and then, make a conversation. And so I would say use LinkedIn. Please don't limit yourself to a Facebook group page. Please, please, please. I, I totally agree with, with you guys. And um, so I really believe that a website is super important. If you can't find a website or let's say it's underneath your, your you don't have budget for it, um, go out into those Facebook groups, LinkedIn, connect with as many people as possible um, and go in with a game plan. Um, what we specifically use because we're in the electrical contracting space, we have to have a website. We have to have testimonials. If um, uh, Google my business, which is you know part of Google, uh, make sure that you have a listing there because when someone goes in to Google your services and you don't have any reviews or testimonies that have come in, they're gonna look at that immediately. So you wanna make sure you build that up. So we actually benefit more from our reviews that are out there, okay? So use platforms like Yelp, for example. If you're a caterer, get on Yelp. If any kind of business can be on Yelp. So start building that up. Some of these tools are completely free. Um, I did want to mention out there on the website really quick was when you do get a website, Monique, your websites are great. So Keisha, uh, thumbs up on, on that. Um, they're great and they're dynamic. But if you have to put it out there like, look, I'm a woman professional. I know what I'm doing. I wear 20 different hats. Come and find just one slot go for women professional organizations that can endorse you because sometimes you need the power of numbers to come behind you and go, you know what? She may have be, she may be starting out, but she's a veteran in what she does. And when you have a thousand women behind um, accepting a woman into this group. So look out for some of those that are affordable. Um, and also Monique I'll, and Keisha, I'll send you a link of some of them. And then that way that can help at least build something up before you know you invest in a website get both of them going on at the same time but those are some of the ways when you're starting out to do it because not everyone is on social media and a lot of people that are shopping around for stuff sometimes in corporate america they can get to linkedin but they can't get to facebook so just mm. just know that there's doors that are closed between nine to five that you're missing out on if you're on one single platform mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. So the last question that I want to bring up before we uh, run out of time here for our first uh, panel discussion uh, is in regards to COVID. Of course, this is, you know, the thing of the time. Our world has pretty much been turned upside down um, uh, because of this pandemic. So the question is, um, what are you ladies doing now in preparation for or, or rather even how are you moving forward now that we're in the thick of this thing? and unsure about what is to come because of the pandemic, what are some of the things that you are doing right now to make sure that you are still continuing to be successful during you know, such a tumultuous time? Um, who, who wants to tackle that first? Okay, Monique. Oh, okay, good question. I wonder who thought it up. No, uh, but I am, what I am doing is going just as hard um, as I was before the pandemic. I, I may not be out as much shaking hands and meeting people and going to places to meet people face to face, but where I can't do face to face, I am now joining more groups uh, online and I am now meeting people and we are collaborating in that way. For my business, I am taking and carving out, well, businesses, I'm carving out time throughout the day that I am using to commit to marketing, commit to learning something more about my business or my industry. Um, I am looking for bigger rooms to be in because one thing I have learned is if I'm the smartest one in the room, I'm in the wrong room. But guess what? Right now, everybody is in the room of their house, which means that I am now able to access 
people that I may not have thought that I was able to access. So I am in DMs of people who I think that would, would love my service, would love my product, and they just didn't happen to know how great I was. But now since you're sitting at home, probably looking at your computer or phone, now you will be interested in me. So those are the things that I am doing. I'm making sure to mentally not get overwhelmed with the fact that my new normal is not what I'm used to, but maybe something that is going to be better for me and my family. That's it. I love that. Who wants to tackle that question next? I can't. Oh. <laughs> okay, go ahead, Erin. Well, um, so what we did was we uh, turned to technology. And so anything that we can do virtually, we'll do that. So if people have, now that everyone's stuck in their houses, they don't like their light fixtures, they don't like the way, you know, certain things look. So what we do now is uh, we have virtual estimates. And so we, we're getting people comfortable with using technology and, um, you know, letting them know that we're easy to work with and that we're open. Here's another thing. Don't forget to remind people that you're open because not every business is open. So make sure you're being you're in front of people and letting them know that that's what we do. We haven't missed a beat, um, but also we're in Texas. It's HVAC season. So, you know, it, it is our prime season right now, but we are communicating more and we're focusing more on branding, not the marketing selling aspect of it. It's the branding. We're out there in the community while things are, you know, leveled out. Um, so you see us more often, just not giving you as much services as before, but you see us. So I think it's very important to distinguish between um, marketing to sell the service versus branding and letting people know that you're out there. Right. Brand brand recognition is everything uh, during a time like this. Um, go ahead, Amanda. Yeah, I was going to say the same thing. I would say full steam ahead. That's exactly what I'm doing as well. Just to give you some... Um, some context as well. Walt Disney, right? So Disney, um, when the recession hit back in 2008, everybody kind of cut back on their spending and were trying to make sure that they had reserves set up and, um, and trying to curb layoffs and all of that. Um, a lot of people were afraid, but uh, Disney actually spent more in their marketing, spent more in their employees, hired more people with the expectation that they were gonna succeed on the back end. And lo and behold, they grew 10 times over because of that investment. So what am I saying? I'm saying invest in yourself. Now is the time to get creative and try to explore things that you didn't have an opportunity to explore before, such as your online um, avenues, right? So people are now more than ever doing online courses. I see so many online courses, it's insane. So um, using video, having an opportunity to write more, take this chance to really um, to explore and get creative with yourself, with your, with your business or with starting your business. Um, another thing that I would say too is start thinking about ways that you can cut costs. So for example, not sacrificing quality, but cutting costs. So for example, do you really need to sign a lease? Do you really need a brick and mortar location? Think about that. Can your, off, can your services be provided online? Can you work from um, you know, a shared space and then go to your client's offices? Just kind of thinking about how you can get nifty with, um, with your expenses as well. Because I realized, whoa, I'm doing just fine working from home. I don't actually need to have a brick and mortar location right now. Um, so that's, those are the things that I'm kind of doing, right? I'm, I'm planning on what my next steps are. I am not stopping. I have not, I have not cut back on anything. Um, in fact, I'm actually investing more into my company because once this is over and it will be over, um, I have something to look forward to and I have more to offer. I love that. Anitra, go ahead. I would say, um, as a woman business owner that from day one, you have to, um, diversify and you have to exhaust. And what I mean is by, if you own, if you provide a service, you need to also look at how you can pro provide a product. If you provide a product, you need to look at how you can provide a service. And that's pretty much with anything um, that you offer. If you have one business, if you have five, you need to exhaust everything that you can, like drain that thing and get everything out of it that you can possibly push out uh, for your audience. Because as we were discussing before, we have people that um, go primarily to may shop online, may only shop in stores, 
and we want to be able to meet the need. We still want to be able to add value and help them in whatever space that they're in. So we have to come up with creative ways, creative products um, to offer while we're asleep, while they're awake and, and different methods for still being able to be um, viable. You know, just if you're like Aaron said, they're offering services uh, virtually now. I actually moved my practice completely online for the exception of some older clients um, about nine months ago, not even thinking that anything like this could happen. But it was such a blessing um, to move into that space prior to this. So it's really, really important that we um, put on all those thinking caps and come up with creative ways, proactive ways that we can keep our businesses viable and um, relevant and provide as much value to our clients and our customers as possible. Thank you guys so much. This has been um, an amazing first half. I want you all to make sure over in the chat section uh, that you guys are scrolling through there. Um, our speakers have been dropping some gems um, in there as well. So make sure you're, tr you're um, going through the chat session, um, taking advantage of the resources that are being provided there. Also, make sure you look at your program uh, that was emailed to you um, when you registered. Um, so that you can make sure to have the contact information for all of our panelists today. Um, there is also, if you look on your screen in the left-hand side, there's an expo session or section um, where you can actually shop uh, with our different vendors. Um, so make sure you check that out, see who's in there, uh, take advantage of uh, the products and services that they are offering. Um, and what we're going to do, we're gonna actually take a 15-minute break. We do, if you wanna stay here, um, as well, pop back through here. Uh, we will be running a couple of commercials so that you can uh, take a look and see some of the uh, the awesome businesses that are sponsoring um, and supporting this amazing event. And uh, once again, thank you so much, uh, Iram, Amanda, Anitra, and of course, Monique, um, for all of the, the insight um, and wisdom that you guys have shared uh, for this first half. So make sure everybody that whether you go to the expo or if you just hang out here and look at the commercials to be back um, at 12.15 so that we can get started on our second half of questions with some more amazing um, women-owned pro business professionals. Awesome.